Innovation takes many forms. Ideas that transform how we think about the world, devices that reinvent the way we live, or methods that make breakthrough discoveries possible. Conventional wisdom suggests innovation is more likely to emerge when creative thinkers have the maximum freedom to reimagine what is possible. For scientists, this often means chipping away at fundamental questions in relative isolation from the rest of society. It's only later do innovations from this diffuse more widely. Given the amazing accomplishments resulting from this approach, it's easy to appreciate why research cultures often promote an environment where curious and clever people work unconstrained and unburdened from the direct responsibility for solving societal problems. This idea that scientific independence is essential to the process of innovation drives many scientists, funders, and leaders within and outside of science to safeguard intellectual freedoms. But a side effect of this approach can be a form of separation of science from society, which may hinder the ability of science to address some of society's most urgent and complex challenges. When disconnected from scientific processes and results, users of science, like policymakers or community members, are less able to access or even less likely to trust scientific knowledge that could be beneficial. When considering the novel and enormous challenges the 21st century presents, it's imperative more than ever before for science to more meaningfully connect with society and contribute to society's big challenges, while also retaining and ideally enhancing its tremendous innovation generating capacity, as well as the freedom of thought and expression embedded within that. In exploring how to meet this challenge, a different, more interactive and collaborative way of doing science is becoming more widespread. More scientists are now questioning convention and integrating their science with society through collaborations with individuals that have the potential and often necessary expertise needed to generate innovation relevant for societal problem solving. This can include collaboration in identifying questions, determining methods, collecting data, interpreting results, and sharing conclusions. While scientists using this approach are still driven by scientific curiosity and a desire for discovery, they are also motivated to see their science contribute more directly to action and solutions. While more scientists are engaging with society, we still know relatively little about how these alternative ways of doing science compare to more conventional approaches. Nevertheless, early glimpses show how different modes advance both science and practice in new, innovative, and exciting ways. Learning more about innovation in this context requires many different kinds of scientists and scholars working together with users, funders, and beneficiaries of science, and asking lots of questions like, what are the types and ranges of innovation in both science and its application that emerge from research approaches that are more interactive with society? Do different approaches to research yield different kinds of innovation? If so, why? Do different approaches to research and resulting innovations help society better tackle 21st century problems? If so, how? These are big questions. A lot can be learned about changes in how we do science and what spurs innovation by looking at the earth sciences. Communities around us are looking to access and utilize earth science to understand and respond to risks and opportunities. Yet the speed and scale of our ever-changing planet and society requires more and quicker innovation. And innovation not just in technology, but also changes to organizations and institutions. In this process, it's possible that our institution of science, like our planet and society, is presently undergoing potentially seismic changes and reevaluation. If the American Geophysical Union is any indication, more Earth scientists than ever before are doing their research in collaboration with non-researchers who have expertise in what kinds of knowledge is needed, who have a stake in research outcomes, and who can use the science to inform decisions and actions. If you search AGU abstracts throughout the years, you can see a marked increase in scientists connecting geoscience with society. Here are the amount of abstracts that use the terms decision maker and stakeholder, which signifies an increase in partnerships. Here's how many more included actionable and action-oriented which signifies a focus on generating useful information. And here's how many more use the terms co-produce, co-create, co-develop, and co-design, which signifies the importance of working together. 
From working with ski resorts to study the effects of climate change on snow, to reaching out to water agencies to evaluate the skillfulness of hydrologic models, to helping regulators and restoration professionals anticipate and respond to harmful algal blooms, opportunities for meaningful interaction with potential users during the research process abound. Thus, the science doesn't occur in isolation, but instead in the world of decision-making, policy, and implementation. There's good reason for hope that more collaborative research will increase the likelihood that outcomes from research are used. Beyond the use of science, there's hope that doing collaborative research will foster different kinds of innovation and ways of thinking. We're starting to learn more from the experiences of earth scientists doing collaborative research more broadly. From a recent survey of over 200 AGU members who have recently led or participated in a collaborative research project that involved users or stakeholders, a vast majority, that's 70% or greater, responded that they're interacting frequently with users and stakeholders of their research on quarterly intervals or more often. They're finding funding for collaborative research. Collaborations with non-researchers are helping to develop new scientific questions and collaborations are changing the ways researchers and collaborators think about problems and solutions. Stories are also emerging from many different types of earth scientists conducting collaborative research. For example, a hydrologist working with water managers to produce new data shared this experience. Quote, we handed off the data to the users and they came back saying, no, this is no good. We ended up going back, recalibrating everything, and it ended up being a better representation of the hydrology of the region. I think it's a testament to the diversity of eyes, because it's like I'm kind of toiling away on my computer, but there's other people with a totally different perspective. It makes you think about the scientific questions from a different perspective. It's just like the peer review process, but like it includes a different set of experiences." End quote. These stories highlight how, as one AGU member put it, innovation is like a creative development of something new that people actually can use. Or as another member put it, innovation is being willing to think outside of your expected and established understanding of systems, to be uncomfortable and try new things. As AGU celebrates its centennial, there are now more opportunities than ever before to contribute, discover, learn, and innovate. We'd love for you to come join us.